Welcome back. You're watching our special conversation here on CNBC TV 18 as we discuss the trade and investment outcomes likely at the end of President Obama's visit to India. There has been criticism on the part of the United States that while there's been a lot of talk about defense cooperation, orders have gone to Russia and so on and so forth. Do you believe that we are going to see both governments work closer together as far as the defense area is concerned? I think it's one of the sectors which has seen um, exponential growth if I may say that, um, the defense framework agreement was valid for 10, ten years. years. Um, and so now what we expect is to have another agreement for another 10 years, which will um, extend the existing agreement and also update it in the light of the desire of both countries to also look at opportunities in joint research, joint production, joint technology development mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. But uh, to say that uh, we have not been placing orders on the U.S. is a bit, uh, I think, uh, unfair. Far, uh, unfair. No, no, oh, far, far, far from the... Ten, ten billion. Far, ten far billion from, yes. Is, yes. But they were the largest, according to James, yeah. the U.S. was the largest supplier of defense equipment to India That's last right. year. That's right. So, um, and I think India will... But, but, but India the will, has been expressed by me, the U.S. itself. Me, yeah, let me say that, you know, not every order will go to the U.S. Sure. because India will look to maximize its... Uh, uh, opportunities uh, in a multi-vendor market. Absolutely. So whoever gives us the best commodity at the best price and you know the best technology transfer and so on mm. would obviously win in different sectors. So mm. it's not that any one country mm. would have a veto on supplies in any particular area. But given the U.S. strength in defense technology and India's desire mm. to upgrade its technical capabilities, there's a real opportunity here. There is an issue in the sense that we are not very sure how far the U.S. would be willing to transfer technology, technology. Yeah. to Indian companies because yeah. they haven't really been very liberal in transfer of technology even to their allies because the technology is held by private companies. You're absolutely right. How far would they be willing You're to You're right. That? And that's where perhaps we are going to get stuck because uh, the policy at this point in time, while hiking the cap to 49%, says that if you want to do 100%, it has to be on the basis of transfer of technology. Uh, as far as hype versus reality on defense cooperation is concerned, which side are you on? Well, essentially there are three elements that we need to look at in uh, defense cooperation, which I think the Modi government wants any defense cooperation to sort of uh, deliver. One is technology transfer. We, we've heard and talked about that a yeah. lot. And, you know, I think the U.S. has problems almost like any other, sure. uh, uh, you know, sort of supplier. I think the Russians have been equally uh, miserly in the transfer yeah. of technology, yeah. shall we say, you know. Uh, but the second element, which is equally important, is jobs. Uh, and I think, you know, for the first time, this government is starting to look at defense production as yeah. a way of creating more jobs. jobs in this country. Right. This then brings us to the third element of Make in India. Mm. And there actually, there's a little bit of a tension mm. between India and the U.S. Mm. on Make in India. Mm. Because part of the, uh, you know, challenge is the U.S. wants to have jobs in the in U.S. The US yeah. So how does that going to work out here? Now here, exactly the point uh, that was made by mm. Mr. Rani is if you can think of making in India for India, mm. Uh, then perhaps there's some viability of looking at that. But I think any uh, defense production going forward yeah. would have to try and cover these three areas. Zubin and Mr. Agarwal, let me start by asking you for your thoughts as far as defense cooperation are concerned. And then I'll talk to you about energy, which is going to be the next big area where we are going to see the two countries work together on defense. So I think there clearly is a lot of room for cooperation. Uh, I think India has a large procurement program, etc. Again, I think the, let me start with Make in India first. Uh, the, the viability of manufacturing in India is directly proportional to volumes. Yeah. I mean, you can't think of making ones and twos oh, or sure, aircraft, sure. whatever it is. So volumes, I think, are important, which means that for manufacturers such as ourselves, if we have a line of sight mm. to large volumes over a certain period of time, mm. I'm sure we will not hesitate in doing what, whatever is necessary mm. to be competitive. As far as technology, transfer of technology is concerned, there is again a government angle because I think the U.S. government does come into play yeah. in certain critical technologies, so I think that has to be dealt with. Mm. The second is the ability of India to absorb technology. Mm. Right. I think it's, it's one thing to give technology, mm. but it's another to absorb technology. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to work on that piece as well. 
energy cooperation because that is going to be the other framework that is going to be inked this time around. How big an opportunity is that likely to be? And, and President Obama wants to get India and China on board as far as the climate talks are concerned. Well, uh, certainly energy is one area which, uh, you know, we've, we've focused on very much in Brookings India and just put out this briefing book that yeah. the ambassador released yesterday, yeah. sort of focusing uh, largely on clean energy. I think that's very much the area of cooperation mm. for the two sides, you know, to sort of focus mm. on. And, and there again, uh, you know, very much the ambassador argued uh, yesterday that if cooperation could lead to India reducing its carbon, carbon emissions by 25 percent. Mm. Which, were, which, were, which were committed to, but were not committed to a timeline. Precisely. Yeah. But, but precisely. And I, th and I think there actually India and the U.S. have a good story to tell. Because there's a lot being done within India on this front, and more can be done in this cooperative framework. Mm. So let me start by getting wrap-up comments. And Meera Shankar, let me ask you, you know, there's uh, been this talk of a bilateral investment treaty that uh, should be put together. There's been work that's, uh, that's gone behind it as well. Do you think that, you know, a treaty is going to be able to get us from the 100 billion to 500 billion? Or is it really actively engaging with each other on all of these issues, which will ensure that we get to that mark? I think it's actively engaging uh, with each other on all these issues. It's uh, the size of the market in India and the size of the opportunity in India and how uh, easy we make it for companies mm. to avail of that opportunity or how hard we make it mm. for companies to want to avail of the opportunity but to hesitate. So a lot will depend on how we improve our overall business environment. So far we've been weighed down by ease of doing business, transfer pricing, arbitration, so on and so forth. But at the end of the day, with an economy that is growing at 6.5% and possibly even higher, is all of this going to be sort of pushed to the sideline? No, I think the opportunity is for real. And I think with the intentions now particularly coming to the fore, I think this should translate into real ordering, placing, you know, equipment, etc. being purchased. So it should all translate. I think what it will require is, A, the government has to step up its role in building infrastructure. It's got to provide the impetus to build infrastructure. It's not going to come from the private sector to begin with. It can follow, but the yeah. government has to take the lead. Second, I think if you allow technology and industry to have access to the market in its entirety, mm. you will find industry innovating mm. to the right price points. So you think the liberalization is, is not good enough? I think it needs to be more. And, and the third is that I think when we talk about the Indian market needs capital. Mm. The U.S. market has capital. Mm. We need to figure out a way of connecting that capital to the needs of the Indian market. Uh, let me ask you, WPS Sidhu, uh, your three takeaways that would qualify this summit as a success? I, I think the first certainly has to be that you don't need more summits to move this process <laughs> forward. And I think the summits themselves should, you know, uh, I mean, there, there are many issues which are in the joint declaration the last time around, yeah. which shouldn't be there. Uh, the civil nuclear cooperation, for yeah. example, is yeah. one. Intellectual property rights. Of course, there's going to be differences on yeah. intellectual property rights. But, but there on, should on, be... on the nuclear issue, do you really see any forward movement? Because the Americans feel cheated, uh, you know, that, that nothing is, has come off it. But from an Indian point, Point of view, it is a significant issue and it's a significant cause of concern. I, I know uh, some of you would would disagree with with what I have to say, but, uh, no, but would no, you no, agree with the Indian point of view? No, 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 I think there are two aspects on the civil nuclear dimension. You know, so one is the liability of suppliers. Yeah. Interestingly, both sides actually agree to that. It's the nature of that. You know, how is it going to be implemented, mm. which is a little bit of an issue. Yeah. And the other is the administrative. Uh, but really, uh, any forward movement on that? We well, have a contact. They group. do. They, they do have. have which was which set up. Which has yeah. met three times. Yeah. I think the last meeting was recently. Correct. And India has offered, uh, according to news reports, uh, via media, where they have proposed an insurance pool. Uh, and I think to some extent the liability of the supplier yeah. has been capped in terms of time under the nuclear rules and regulations right. and overall nuclear liability even of the operator has been capped under the law itself. Subhan Irani, let me end by asking you what are the three things that you would look forward to at the end of this summit? So I'll, I'll give you a couple. Um, I think firstly, you know, we're very excited on the Smart City Initiative and I'd and I'm very, you know, we're very happy to see that the Indian government has allocated three cities, in the cities of Vishaka, Vizak, um, Ajmer, and Allahabad, for close U.S. cooperation. Yeah. So I think we would like to see, you know, perhaps a broader framework that's formed where we can actually discuss 
between you know the sort of private enterprise and government on technologies mm -hmm. that could actually go into that and I know some discussions are happening around that I think financing and funding would also be I think a big component of that so I think that is one the second area of course you know we have a lot of interest in is uh, defense and uh, particularly around you know helicopters and uh, you know I think a, a broader sort of defense partnership you know yeah. agreement would also be you know very which uh, is what is planned Absolutely. So we're looking forward to seeing both of those. All right. So as I said, yeah. expectations are running high at this point in time. Will the summit deliver on the promises made in September 2014? Will it operationalize some of the commitments that were made then and take those forward? At this point in time, it certainly seems that it's mutually beneficial for both India and the U.S. to collaborate and work together with or without a bilateral investment treaty. My many thanks to the panel for joining us here this evening as we discuss Obama's visit to India and the outcomes of this second summit in less than six months. From all of us here, goodbye. Many thanks for watching.